I think people lose a lot of pleasure who find science dull. In the case of science, I think that one of the things that make it very difficult is it takes a lot of imagination. It's very hard to imagine all the crazy things that things really are like. Nothing's really as it seems. If you have uh, a bunch of animals, a cup of coffee or something sitting on the table, and the atoms are jiggling a great deal in the coffee and they bounce against the cup and the cup then gets shaken. And the atoms in the cup shake and they bounce against the source of the heat. Heats the cup and heats everything else. That hot thing spreads its heat into other things by mere contact. And so if you have something like wood, in oxygen, there's carbon in the wood from a tree, and the oxygen comes and hits it, carbon, but not hard enough. It just goes away again. You know, the air is always coming, nothing's happening. If you can get it faster by heating it up somehow, somewhere, somehow, get it started, a few of them come fast, they go over the top, so to speak, they come close enough to the carbon and snap in, and that gives a lot of jiggly motion which might hit some other atoms, making those go faster so they can climb up and bump against other carbon atoms, and they jiggle, and they make mothers jiggle, and you get a terrible catastrophe, which is one after the other. All these things are going faster and faster and snapping in, and the whole thing is changing. That catastrophe is a fire. trying to imagine all kinds of things all the time. And I get a kick out of it, just like a runner. It's a kick out of sweating. I get a kick out of thinking. You ask me if an ordinary person, by studying hard, would get to be able to imagine these things like I imagine. Of course, I was an ordinary person who studied hard. There's no miracle, people. It just happens they got interested in this thing and they learned all this stuff. They're just people. There's no talent, a special miracle ability to understand quantum mechanics or a miracle ability to imagine electromagnetic fields that comes without practice and reading and learning and study. So if you say, you take an ordinary person who's willing to devote a great deal of time and study and work and thinking and mathematics and time, then he's become a scientist.